rebuilding a vintage open steam launch part 21, making the rudder radio control arm and fitting the rudder and the propeller. But before I do that, I'd just like to do a little bit of painting. This is the main base for the boiler. It's also the part that holds the burner, so I can paint it like this. The boiler base is mounted into the hull using two stainless steel screws. So there's never going to be a problem with rust and the boiler is never going to drop out of the boat. The burner's temporarily been removed from the base and I used a slightly different method of fixing the burner to the base itself. The original base mounting comprised of three pieces of metal, a long piece of brass bar running longitudinally and a couple of pieces of steel running transversely. The piece of brass bar under the boiler mounting plate has three holes in it. Two of them take the wood screws and I silver soldered a bolt into the middle hole. I then drilled out the bottom of the burner because that was originally threaded and the burner just sits on this bolt and it's secured with a brass nut with some sealant on it of course. Well that's the easy part out of the way. The rest of this episode is not quite so easy. The first job I need to do is make the rudder radio controllable because it isn't at the moment. If you've been watching the rest of the series you'll know what this is. It's a special fitting that I made to take the top part of the rudder. And what I'm currently doing using a very sharp scalpel. This is a really sharp knife and if you're using one of these you must wear eye protection because if you put a lot of pressure on the blade, the blade will break and it flies off at a great speed and you never know where it's going to go. And the last thing that you really need is a scalpel blade stuck in your eyeball. These scalpel blades are plenty strong enough for a surgical application. I suppose like a vasectomy. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is they are not designed for chipping away old wood veneer and old glue from a model steamboat. But because this type of knife blade is very small, it's very easy to manoeuvre and it's very sharp, and it's really good for removing veneer to allow you to recess parts like this. The next job to look at is making and fitting an actuating arm to the rudder so that it can be radio controlled. I need to make an arm along the lines of this one. This is fitted to a slide valve regulator. Mines are going to be slightly different though. I'm starting off with a piece of phosphor bronze because this part is going to be drilled and threaded to take a grub screw in order to clamp it to the rudder shaft inside the boat. This clip shows me cleaning up the brass arm that I've just made and this will be silver soldered to the phosphor bronze bush that I showed in the previous clip. You may notice that I've drilled plenty of holes in this piece of brass and that is because I need it to be very adjustable. It needs to be accurately adjusted to suit the travel of the servos because I'm not using a computer set. So the only way I have to limit or increase servo travel is to use different holes in the fittings. So this is the arm before silver soldering and this is the arm after silver soldering. And once again I'm cleaning it up on the piece of wet and dry sandpaper with a little oil. And then I drilled a 1 8 of an inch hole in the bush threaded it 4BA to take a 4BA grub screw. And here I'm showing a test fit of the grub screw to the rudder shaft. And everything seems to be okay. The next job that I'm about to do looks quite violent but it really isn't. Once again experience counts on jobs like this. If the hammer misses the piece of brass and smashes the hull that would not be good. When I made the original rudder tube fitting, I made it far too long. So I've cut it down and I used a knurling tool to roughen up the part that's inside the hull. That's why it needed tapping into place. Now I'm doing a test fit of the rudder in the rudder tube. And the rudder shaft seems to be a nice sliding fit in the brass part at the top. The reason for using a knurling tool on the brass part is to roughen the surface to give it a better key for the adhesive. I'm going to fix this in position with some epoxy resin, then it's not going to move at all. But there's sufficient flexibility in the rudder shaft to allow it to be fitted without any problems. And this clip shows me mixing some two-pack epoxy resin to bond the brass tube in place. And while this two-pack epoxy resin is setting in the hull, it's time to look at the propeller shaft. And the first thing to do is apply some grease 
followed by a stainless steel thrust washer. A thrust washer is quite important to stop the propeller rubbing against the gland nut. Did I mention there's a gland on this prop shaft? Yes, there is. A stuffing gland stops water running up the shaft. And I've put an O-ring in here. And once the gland nut is tightened up, I don't think much water is going to get past this silicone O-ring. Apart from the grease, I use some of my steam oil and rapeseed oil mixture, which is a really good lubricant, very low friction lubricant. Just a quick note on tightening gland nuts, and it's the same with gland nuts on a steam engine, whether they be on the steam chest or on the main cylinder. What you normally do is tighten the gland nut until you can feel some resistance, and then if you rotate the shaft, or on a steam engine, move the rod in and out, if you feel resistance, this is not good, so you just back off the gland nut until it's free spinning. Back off the gland nut a tiny bit, and you'll feel when it's right. Over tightening gland nuts is wrong for many different reasons. Mainly, it's a complete waste because you're generating friction, and also you can badly score the metal parts. You wouldn't think so, but I've seen some piston rods very badly scored just by having the gland nuts over tightened. So that's the propeller and the shaft permanently back in place. And in the time period that it took to do that, the epoxy resin has fully cured and the rudder tube is now really solidly fixed into the hull. I neglected to mention that when I fitted the rudder shaft to the rudder tube, I did actually pass it through the arm that I made to connect to the servo. I didn't the first time, and I thought, hmm, so I took it out again, but the second time I did remember to thread it through the bush and tighten up the grub screw. The general feel of the rudder is good. It's not very slack, it doesn't rattle about, it's nice and smooth. And when I fit the original square fit into the top of the shaft, nothing tightens up, so that's a good thing. Anyway, for the moment I'm removing that top fitting, and I'm removing the brass fitting because I need to epoxy this in place. It can't just be a rattle fit. So taking great care not to get epoxy resin on the wooden part of the boat, other than under the piece of brass, I put it all together. I then put on an O-ring and tighten the fitting. And what this serves to do is put a bit of spring tension to make sure that the brass part is pressed firmly down into the recess where the epoxy resin is. When I look at the layout of this boat, it really is tricky to do some of the radio control work. I think I may use a closed loop system like I would use on a model aircraft. But for the moment, the rudder is very free moving, and when I put a little bit of pressure on the arm, it moves very easily. So that's a good thing. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.